thank you for allowing me to speak here. Um, <clears throat> experiment is really the core of the scientific method. It's really the key to science. Yeah, it, when you make a hypothesis, you must be able to back it up and either prove it through real-world experiments or real happenings that we see uh, with other events. An experiment cannot be replaced uh, with computer models or, uh, or mathematics unless that unless the mathematics and computer models are, are, uh, are confirmed by experiments. So what I tried to do is I looked at uh, several different uh, issues on 9-11 and through the years put together a series of, of experiments to either confirm or, or prove wrong uh, various hypotheses. So my first experiment is I wanted to test um, a claim that was made regarding that sulfur. Uh, Dr. Stephen Jones as uh, was just mentioned that there was a strange uh, sulfur that was found uh, in eutectic formations that came from the uh, gypsum drywall. The claim was from the BBC, since nobody could answer it, and this never addressed it, that the gypsum came from, uh, I mean, that the sulfur came from gypsum drywall. And I think on the next slide, this is what the, this is what we were told by the mainstream exper experts. The BBC made a statement that the um, sulfur came from the gypsum drywall that stewed in the pile for weeks. So they never, uh, they never put together an experiment, so I put together an experiment uh, where basically I took a steel column or a steel beam and I wrapped it with gypsum and I burned it for several hours in the fire. Here it is right here. Then I removed the gypsum and I removed everything after it stewed and there was no intergranular uh, uh, deformations, no thinning of it. It was still solid and sound. So by experiment, we're proving that the gypsum drywall was not the source of the sulfur. It had to be some other source. So that's just a, um, that's the first experiment. <clears throat> okay, yeah, the, as, as was pointed out earlier, earlier today, there were several different claims on how those towers came down. The first claim was a pancake uh, type collapse, and the second claim was a pile driver type collapse. So one of the ways we can test this theory is either to compare it to uh, either compare it to real world uh, other buildings that came down, or to make our own experiments to see if we can get the similar motions uh, as far as the pancake or the pile driver collapse. And so I ran some experiments. This is what we were told by the PBS and the Nova program. That hit play. The floors they were holding cascade down with a force too great to be withstood. The result is what's called a progressive collapse, as each floor pancakes down onto the one below. Now, what they forgot to do is continue to keep uh, going here. We, we noticed quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of the core column still there. Uh, I decided again to run my own experiments, and I don't know if I've lost the video here. Go back this was some uh, this was some pancake type experiments, and in every experiment I ran, this is just one example. The falling object always decelerated or slowed down, uh, and so it, I could not support the pancake theory of collapse. Next, Richard. So, and even NIST came out later on, and they said that they do not support the pancake theory of collapse. They said that in 2011. So what NIST did, uh, although they stopped their study at collapse initiation, they endorsed the Byzant pile driver collapse. And like the pancake collapse, uh, the sequence of forces that we are observing here had to be first down from gravity, and then any outward motion had to come later. Uh, so, that, so the sequence of forces uh, with either theory was down first and then out. So again, I wanted to run some experiments. Here's an experiment with a falling object. This is a pancake, and every time, this is just one example uh, that I ran this, uh, the top section would always decelerate. It would never accelerate. And even when I used some paper walls, I tried to make my little experiments as weak as possible. Even then, there was still no uh, acceleration. It was always a deceleration in every time that I did that, and there was no crush down, crush up. Now, the controlled demolition, demolition theory, unlike the pancake and the pile driver theories, the sequence of forces are now reversed. Instead of being down by gravity and then out, 
really what we're saying is the forces were first out and then it allowed the gravitational acceleration down. So it was out and down. So if we experiment with some explosives, I put some firecrackers in some towers, uh, set them up, and this is what happened. And if we, if we take a look at this, we see that the upward motion uh, was, again, was outward first and then down. Now with the towers, uh, they were also out and down motions. Let's see if they're similar. So if we do a side-by-side -side comparison here and we observe the motions. And again, we see that spire in the middle. It did not come down. And we observe the motion of the top stories. They're uniform and they're relatively smooth. There is no impact. And this may be why they were unable to provide a full explanation of the total collapse. Thank you, John Cole, civil engineer, Sarasota, Florida.